In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of forces that we might run into here in physics and how we're going to handle uh, keeping track of all of those forces. Uh, to start out here in this video, let's refer to these forces as weight, normal reaction force, and tension. And we're going to get into detail about each of those here in just a little bit. To start us off, uh, let's talk about weight. Now, you probably are familiar with this idea of weight. You step on a scale and it gives you your weight. Uh, but all that really is, is you compressing the scale that you're stepping on because of the force of gravity. If there was no gravity pulling you down, you would measure nothing on that scale because there is no force that you're pushing down on the, the balance with. We know a way to find force if we know an acceleration. Newton's second law tells us that F is equal to ma. Uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Weight is just a special version of this equation uh, using gravity instead of just a generic acceleration. So our formula for weight is just Fg, the force of gravity, fancy way of saying weight, is equal to the mass times gravity. Now notice this is exactly the same relationship, only instead of F it's Fg and instead of A it's G. So let's define these really quick. Fg is our force of gravity. You can use it interchangeably with the word weight. Uh, and since this is a force, it is measured in Newtons. So I think that's where force of gravity is a little easier because you know what the units are for, for a force. M is the mass. This must be in kilograms. If it's in grams, it is not going to give you Newtons because of the definition, the derived unit of Newton and what that represents. And G is taking the place of the acceleration in this Newton's second law, uh, but it's specifically here the acceleration due to gravity. So on Earth, uh, that we're taking that as 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, in our previous unit of motion, we really paid attention to the direction of this acceleration. That we said our acceleration is actually a negative 9.81 because we're moving downward. But in this case, we're going to use arrows to represent the direction of the force anyway. So let's just keep it positive and say that your weight's always going to be a positive number. We just know that it's down. So if you see me using 9.81 without it being negative, don't freak out. Um, we're just going to represent weight or use this value from here on out as a positive number. Now, uh, there is a distinction here between these two terms that we don't always think about. Mass and weight are different things. Um, and you've probably talked about this in some science class leading up to this point. Um, but let's just rehash this and remind ourselves of what that is. Uh, I've got a bowling ball here. Uh, this bowling ball is made up of a certain amount of matter. There are a bunch of atoms here that make up this bowling ball. Mass is a representation of how much matter an object has. If I have this bowling ball here, or I have this bowling ball on the moon, it has the same number of atoms. That hasn't changed. Um, so mass is how much stuff uh, is inside an object, how many atoms it has. Weight is how that mass interacts with the gravitational field. So the weight is just the force due to gravity. So here on Earth, I can calculate the weight, just the mass times 9.81. But if I'm on the moon, that acceleration due to gravity is different, which means the weight is going to be different as well. Uh, if I'm on Jupiter or any, any other planet, same thing. That the weight changes, but the mass does not because it's the same amount of matter. Now, a good way to remember the difference is just to know and keep track of the units. Mass, as we've been using this whole time, has units of kilograms. But weight, since it is a force, has units of Newtons. Now, it's kind of tricky to think about because uh, some countries report kilograms. Like I could say I am this many kilograms, whereas here in the U.S. a lot of times we say I am this many pounds. Uh, and technically, these those are not apples to apples comparisons. Uh, pound is a unit of weight. It's pound force, and mass kilograms is a unit of mass. Um, we're gonna use a conversion factor here to convert pounds into mass, uh, into kilograms, but technically uh, weight here in the, the metric system is going to be measured in units of newtons and not units of kilograms. 
So let's figure out what that is for us. Um, if you want to find your weight in newtons, first, you need to figure out what your mass is in kilograms. Uh, the conversion factor states that it's roughly 2.2 pounds for every kilogram. So if I am 165 pounds, that means I'm roughly 75 kilograms. Uh, I'm just setting up my conversion factor here so that pounds cancel out. Um, so I'm 75 kilograms. That means that if I know the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth, 9.81, I can find my weight in newtons. It's just 75 kilograms times 9.81. So 736 newtons. That means when I'm standing on the ground, I'm exerting 731 newtons, 736 newtons of force on that ground. Um, the other day, we talked about a conceptual model of Newton being an apple that you're holding in your hand. So you could think of this as I have the force of 736 apples pushing on the ground. We're going to be calculating weight all the time. So you'll get used to that really pretty easy. If you know the mass, just multiply by, by gravity. Now, another type of force that we're going to see and that you're experiencing right now is something called a normal reaction force. And this really gets into the idea of Newton's third law, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Um, so here we have a bowling ball. Actually, my bowling ball is experiencing this right now, sitting on a table. Um, if it is sitting on a table, it has a force of gravity. It has weight, um, obviously, because it's here on Earth, and Earth has a gravitational field. But if this were the only force that were acting, it would be accelerating downward towards the Earth because it would have a net force. And I know that this bowling ball is currently in equilibrium. All the forces must cancel out because it isn't moving. It's not accelerating at all. Um, that means that there must be an upward force that is pushing back on it. And it's, it's the table giving an equal and opposite reaction in this case. We're going to give that symbol an R. This is the only force that we're going to represent without a capital F. Uh, and it's an IB notation thing. You could also use an F. Um, which I'll show you in a minute. This R actually stands for reaction force, um, but the full name of it is actually called the normal reaction force. Uh, and so you may hear me talk about the normal force. It's part of this, this larger name. Other classes um, that you might take in the future or other physics classes that your friends are in uh, might be describing this as just the normal force and representing it with Fn. Um, it is the same force. Uh, R is just IB's way of using it. And we're going to see it in equations later on. So I'm going to use R here uh, in this case. Now, an interesting thing about R is that R being a normal reaction force applies the rules of math, geometry, and something known as a normal line or something that is normal to a surface. Normal to a surface just means that it is perpendicular to the surface. So right now, if my table is perfectly flat, perpendicular is straight up. Uh, so if the table is horizontal, perpendicular to the table is up. But if I rotate the table, that R is going to rotate with the table. That's a pretty cool animation. So R is going to be pushing perpendicular to wherever the table happens to be facing. But notice, Gravity doesn't necessarily do that. Um, gravity is always pulling down towards the center of the Earth, but R can change. And we're going to see that a little bit more when we get into circular motion here um, and when we get into forces on a ramp. Um, but note for now that normal reaction force doesn't necessarily have to be straight up. It will just be in the direction of the perpendicular of the surface. So normal reaction is just a way of a surface applying a force. So we can use that idea to figure out in some pretty simple equilibrium situations what the normal reaction force is going to be. Uh, so say we have a five kilogram block here just sitting on a table that is experiencing gravity. Um, the force of gravity is mass times acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81. So five times 9.81 gives me a force of gravity of about 49 newtons. This object is in equilibrium. So we know that there has to be a force upward. In this case, the only force upward uh, for this block is the force of the table acting on the block. Uh, that table is exerting a normal reaction force. And since it is having, having to cancel out, 
we know that that normal reaction force, R, has to be equal to Fg, which we knew was 49. So if you know Fg, you can find R. Um, it's just equal and opposite. Now, if we make this a little bit more interesting, say that you have a string that you tie in the block and you pull up a little bit on that string. Um, we can find the normal reaction force here. It's not going to be 49 because you're helping it out a little bit. The table doesn't have to support the whole thing. We still have a five kilogram block, which means we still have a 49 Newton weight. Um, now this 49 Newtons of weight is partially canceled out by this 20 Newtons of force that's going up from your, your rope, which means that your normal reaction force does not have to be as big in this case. It just has to be whatever it needs to add up to that equal and opposite weight. So in this case, one way to think of it is R is just whatever the difference is. So it's the force of gravity minus whatever that tension force is. So 49 minus 20 will give me 29. Now, you didn't have to do the math equation to figure that out. Just say, all right, what does this arrow have to be so that when it adds up with 20 equals 49? And the, the answer there is 29 newtons. All right, our last type of force that I want to introduce in this video is the easiest one for us, uh, nothing too special about it, uh, is the force of tension. Um, now, if you have a rope that's supporting an object with a force uh, of gravity of 100 newtons, you would pull up on that rope this way. And that's because a rope will always pull in the direction, um, so the tension force will always pull in the direction of the rope or chain. Tension never pushes. It never supports in any other direction. So if you were to extend that rope like over a pulley and then pull on it here, um, all it's done for you is change the direction that that force is acting um, to allow you to pull in that direction. So you're not pushing up on the rope this way. You're pulling in the direction that the rope is acting. Um, so you can calculate it there. This uh, tension force is usually given the symbol F. T for the force of tension. Um, so if you have like here in the Pixar short for the birds, um, the force of tension is just acting in those directions. We saw this when we were looking at net, uh, net force the other day um, and using those components of vectors to figure out these angled ones. Um, that is most common when we're dealing with tension, uh, tension forces because they have to act in that, in that angle. So where that leaves us, you should be able to calculate the weight of an object. Uh, the force of gravity is just the mass times gravity, 9.1. You should be comfortable talking about the difference between mass and weight. Um, specifically, know that weight is measured in Newtons. Weight is not in kilograms, that's mass. Weight is in Newtons. Um, you can use Newton's third law or some concepts of that to describe how normal reaction force uh, is occurring and then identify the direction of tension force that is acting on an object.